using the min sprint to predict language proficiency of Chinese English bilingual. So let me just get the term out of the way. The min sprint stands for multilingual naming test. So this test was de developed to predict language proficiency, especially in uh, bilinguals. And this test was firstly developed because self-rating and some tests like Boston naming tests are not really reliable measure because certain items are culturally biased that cannot measure people who grew up in different cultural contexts. And the means the mean sprint has already been proven as a reliable measure of language proficiency for Spanish English bilingual validated by the oral proficiency interview. The oral proficiency interview is a gold standard in the, in the field that measure language proficiency. Uh, one of the downside of this measurement is it, it takes a long time to do and a lot of resource to administer it. And this study want to see uh, is the mean sprint still a reliable measure in the population of Chinese English bilingual? And also, can we do this test faster? And the reason why we want to think about this question is because if we give people unlimited amount of time to do the naming test, especially in, in their dominant language, they are just going to uh, score in ceiling. So it's very difficult to, to describe people's language proficiency uh, when there is less variance across, across individuals. And also, um, we believe the time pressure actually can improve language proficiency assessment, but uh, as I just mentioned, differentiate people's performance, especially in dominant language. And we have 20 participants and 12 are Chinese dominant and eight are English dominant bilinguals. And all of the participants are uh, did the oral proficiency interview uh, with the experimenter, and they also did the mean sprint passed after that. The order is counterbalanced, and when and when they complete their first pass, and they were prompted by the experimenter to go back to the item they missed and named incorrectly, so their total score will be recorded. And also, we calculate their efficiency score, and the way we do it is to use the timing minutes the participant took to complete the first pass and divide the percentage correct. So um, the bigger the efficiency score, the less effective participants are and naming each items. And we separate our result into non-dominant language and dominant language. Uh, as you can see, non, in non-dominant language, both the first pass and total score of the mint can predict OPI score. And uh, actually the, the total score is actually a better predictor of the OPI score, but the difference between the first pass and total score is very subtle. And then also the non dominant language efficiency score, you can see that the efficiency score is, is able to predict the OPI score. The bigger uh, the efficiency score, the less um, the OPI score. And the right, the figure two and figure four shows the dominant language pattern. Uh, as you can see, the pattern is similar, but the relationship is less strong compared to dominant language. As you can see, the red line, the, the first pass of the mint sprint is only marginally predicts language, language proficiency. And also the, the efficiency score can, uh, can also predict OPI score as showing figure four, but the relationship is less strong compared to uh, non-dominant language. So what can we conclude from this study? So first, the mint sprint is a reliable measure for language proficiency in Chinese English bilingual, and it could save time and resource in both clinical and research settings. And also time pressure does not improve or compromise the assessment of language proficiency um, because we cannot find uh, a significant difference between uh, first pass and the total score. And also um, one of the pattern that the study shows that this non-dominant language shows stronger correlation compared to dominant language. Uh, this probably uh, was explained by uh, the variance, the less variability across individual in the dominant language. And it, it's difficult to tell uh, between peoples when the scores are relatively high. And so which in the case uh, in dominant languages, it's necessary to look at the total score uh, instead of just the first pass. And the limitation of the study is it has a smaller sample size. So future study can definitely take a look at their bigger sample size uh, and a more balanced sample size to see these patterns to replicate.